exactly us knowing our why. And, and in my, my opinion, in my experience, we should divide this in two parts, the getting started and the staying started, because our different uh, whys. When we get started, I remember 10 years ago, my dad passed away and I wanted to have some extra uh, one or two or three uh, thousand dollars to, to have more security, financial uh, freedom. So when we get started to, to start going to the market and sponsor and, and do what it needs to take exactly. Be a pro and, and, and being uh, loyal to the principles, to the industry, long, medium and long term, we need to stay started and work inside ourselves the intangible parts, something that is really inside of you, that you, it will lead you every day in the good days, in the not so good days, and that is a burning desire inside of you. I can tell you my why today is spending high quality time with my queen, my, my, my twins that I love so much, uh, with my family, doing my surfing, doing my trail runs, triathlons, and dedicate time to helping the people of our team achieving their goals, um, uh, being serving them so they can take the best of me for them to take out the best of them. And when you have that why and you stay started every day, for sure you reach our goals, Sapphire, Sapphire Elite, Ruby, Emerald, Diamond, and so on. Thank you. Love that. That's fantastic. The why is what gets you out of bed in the morning for sure. And so once you know your why, the next step is to set goals. And with New Year just around the corner, I think this is a great topic. So how do people set realistic goals that are attainable that help take their business forward? Thank you for the question, Kasaya. First of all, um, I want to, to do a small connection with the the team of Bruno about the why. And, and my why in these events is to thanks and say and say that that uh, we are small now but we will grow i believe in you and thank you to believe in us first of all is that that uh, message the second one uh, it's an interesting point because i think in the beginning of the business the people mixed up a little bit oh, oh. Can it's we get Piotr. another chair here, on the Piotr. stage, please? Come on. Come on, come on. So, <laughs> you have to serve your team always. So, sit, please. Uh, and uh, uh, sometimes in the beginning of the business, the people mixed up the, um, the goals, the financial goals. Because in my opinion, one thing is dream and other thing is need. And uh, it's very interesting because you can find in all the countries in the world one billion whys, but the needs are the same in all countries. And you can find three needs, better health, financial, better financial freedom, and personal development, improve your personal development. And the part of financial, um, I remember 10 years ago when I started uh, I, I started because uh, I wanted to pay my rent, the home rent, 1,000 euros. And I start with this small goal and I never thought uh, to have uh, uh, Mercedes and big homes and amazing holidays. My first uh, goal was to pay my rent and it was easy to achieve it. And I feel so comfortable with high level of uh, motivation that after that I saw my dream. So my advice for you is when you sponsor someone, first of all, um, ask them about their needs. First of all, solve the need of your prospect. That's and because Talking about dreams is it's amazing. It's an amazing feeling talking about dreams. I love to listen about dreams, but dreams are so distant that it's better to achieve what is beside you. And what is beside you and makes you happy quickly is your need. So my advice for you, achieve your need first, and after that, achieve your dream. Thank you. Fantastic. Great advice. I love what, I love what he said about 
you know, those small series of successes because you'll find that confidence is dynamic, right? It builds up and it comes down. But the reality is when you can have uh, those small successes, when you have a big success, you think it's a fluke. And then you think I could never do that again because I didn't really earn it. But it's those series of uh, small wins over time that are really, really impactful. And you also said about being a problem solver. We are in the most amazing business of solving people's problems. It shouldn't be about what you can get from someone. It should be about how you can help them enrich their lives or better their lives. And what better way to do it than with products that everybody needs and wants and an opportunity that can certainly help people better their lives. So thank you. The next step is step number three. So now that we know our why, we've set goals. We need to make a list. We need to figure out who we're going to talk to. So Piotr, welcome to the stage. Thank you for joining us. I see you've got some props, so let's sure. hear how you create a list. Sure, thank you so much. And you know, guys, you probably all heard do the list, memory jogger, you know, who do you know in this town, that town. But uh, I think we all need to think about the list. It's we need to think like the guy in the Bible was sowing the seeds, okay? And uh, we sow the seeds our entire life. So when we do the list, those are people behind the names, those are people on the list. Mm. And I think the big secret is we need to build our entire life. We've, be, we've been building relationships. And lots of people that are saying, oh, I don't like to join MLM, network marketing, because I will lose my friends. I will not invite them because I will lose my friends. Guys, you know, um, before MLM, I had two friends. Right now, I have hundreds of friends yeah. or thousands of friends That's all nice. over the world. Come on. Yes. Yeah. And, you know, in terms of the big secret is growing the list, not only adding people to your list. Of course, you need to go to Facebook and you need to invite and add to your list new people every day, minimum two people. But also you need to bring value for their life. And people who are successful in this business, they are just giving value. You cannot only take, take, take. You cannot only say, join, 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 or buy, or buy, or lend me the money. Yeah? I want to borrow the money, I want to borrow the money, whatever. Do me the favor. If you are taker, you know, this list is a bad list. So you can have 1,000 names on your list, but you're not gonna grow big business. And if you bring value to your list, I mean, good post on social media, you know, good advice, compliment, respecting other people, then your business and your list will be like good list, strong list, powerful list. When you will call them, they will be happy that you are calling instead of avoiding your phone calls, okay? So that's important. So some people will be green apples for you, you know, like if they are not ready to join the business, they will be like green apples. If you build relationships, can, can, thank you. I'm a green, <laughs> yeah. a green one. Yeah. <laughs> if, if you will grow your relationships, if you will bring value to your people, they will be like, you know, red apples, red apples, okay? So you have green apples and red apples. When you call your red apples, when you send them the message, you know, it's good. So just think about bringing value for your list. So your list is like your garden, okay? Just think about the list like it's your garden. Okay, what you can do to really bring more sun, more water, more rain, okay? If you are doing this, it will be easy for you. And some fruits will be long, low hanging fruits, okay? And some fruits will be, you know, really high hanging fruits. So just put your hand up and, and say with me, high hanging fruits, okay? High hanging fruits, all together, come on. High hanging <laughs> fruits. Beautiful. So, you know, some people will join the business because they are low hanging fruits, but then you need to grow yourself. Like Calvin was saying and Damien and everybody else was saying, grow yourself and then you can reach the high hanging fruits. And those are the people who will be, you know, very fast in your business. So that's the key. And one more story to, uh, at the end. I, I was, I heard the story from Jim Rohn. Uh, there was a guy who was the, like a tourist guy and he's coming to the gardener and he's saying, oh, Mr. Gardener, you and good Lord, you have a beautiful garden here. All those fruits, all these amazing, you know, like plants, beautiful. And the gardener is like thinking like that and he's saying, 
oh, I got your point, I understand. If it wasn't the sun and water and rain, you know, this, this garden wouldn't be like that. But you should see the garden when God was having this garden by himself. Okay? Thank you. So that's the point, you know, you see those successful people and you think, oh, they, they got successful overnight. You know, no, they invested in growing the list, in making them, you know, beautiful apples. And that's the key, you know, so grow your list, build your list, you know, like do whatever it takes to build better relationship, to bring value to your list. And then when you will call, they will say yes to you and to their dreams. Thank you so fantastic. much. Fantastic. Thank you. Fantastic. I love the visuals. Thank you for that. I also think it's fantastic that you talk so much about um, adding value. That is so important. And I think our mindset also comes into play when you're building your list. It's instead of thinking like, I don't want to bother that person. They're so much more successful than I am. They're probably really busy. We have to be thinking that you are extending a life changing opportunity to someone. If you didn't get that this morning from some of the diamond speakers that you heard where you saw Calvin change his life completely, Adam's life, Stefania's life, this is a lifeline that you're extending to people. So don't hold out on people. Paula said it best. She said, I wish I would have contacted more people sooner. So reach into your contact list and make sure that you're digging deep. So great advice, Pio. Thank you. So once you've done your list, which is constantly growing, you can't have one list and then be like, oh, well, that doesn't work. We're constantly meeting people and you have to be open to learning new skills, like talking to people when you're out and about and making new friendships, but you have them. So how do you contact and invite them? So the next step, uh, step number four for Tony and Xan is about contacting and inviting. And this is scary for people because we hear the word no. So can you just share with the audience your tips for contacting and inviting? Hello, everybody. Um, look, contacting people, it, it, it is scary for some, but who, who calls network marketing network sitting? Who calls it net, I'm on Facebook? You have to contact people, you have to make new contacts, you have to reach in to the people that you know and love and care about and, and let them see what you're excited about and don't push them. But there is a whole bunch of seeds out there for us to go get. You have to be able to put your hand out and shake someone's hand and make a relationship happen can't get the warm feeling of contacting people just over the internet. You have to get out and you have to handshake and introduce yourself and listen to other people and what their needs are. Because here at Janess, I believe that we have something absolutely incredible that everyone needs in their life. Do you agree? Yes. When you talk to someone regarding Janess, you just don't start babbling and, and, and just throwing up all over people. You don't do that because they will hang up the phone and they will run away from you as fast as they can. You need to take your time, build the relationship, build the trust with the people that you are contacting. Look. We have been a part of Jeunesse now for a little over four years, all right? After three years, we became Diamond. We didn't become Diamond just sitting at home. As a matter of fact, a week ago, I dug into more of my list because I didn't think of everybody. Not everybody, everybody pre-qualifies people. Everyone sits and says, well, they're a great business person and, and I'm not gonna contact the hairstylist because she's already got a business. Wrong. There's people that need to hear about this. So I sat last week and I went through 80 
five people, cold calling people, calling them up. I got 84 no's. My last call, I sat there and I thought, okay, I'm gonna get another no. That's it, I'm gonna get another no. I'm hoping for another no. <laughs> True. That last person, she signed up. Do not give up. You need to talk to people. They all have faces, they all have a why. Find out what their why is. Thanks, baby. I think, yeah, that's great advice. And once you have contacted them, what do you need to do? You need to invite them, right? Invite them to what? Invite them on a three-way call. Like she said, don't throw up all over people. You need to be, if, if you take nothing else away from this step, you need to be the messenger and not the message. You get it, you know all about Jeunesse. But that person can't turn around and do that to their contact list, can they? So be the messenger, not the message. Get them on the phone with your upline and invite them. Invite them to that call, invite them to the next meeting you have in your town, and more importantly, invite them to events like this because in this room, lives are changed. Every one of these events, every one of these events. Bruno talked about the why. The why is important, but when you really, really understand what he was talking about, and you feel that within you, and you look on this stage, and you see the sincerity in these people's eyes that are speaking to you, and you watch those videos of Wendy and Randy and Scott, and you see the love and the true compassion they have for not only each and every one of us, but for people all over the world, that should fill your soul with the passion and the belief that you need to go share this with everyone. And when you share this with everyone, some Kasaya talked about the fear of no. That's normal, you'll never lose that. But you need to learn to embrace it and love it. Because not every no is personal. Remove the emotion from the outcome and understand that you're sharing, as Kasaya said, a life-changing opportunity with people. And every person then that you walk by on the street that you don't talk to, something inside you starts to feel a little guilty. Oh, I should have told that person about Jeunesse because it's awesome. So invite them by... People in this room are going to be in Amsterdam. How many people are going to be in Amsterdam? All right, here. I hope every hand goes up. Now, do you want to go to Amsterdam with some people that you invite to go with you? How about this? How about you go home, put these eight steps to practice over the next couple of months, and instead of inviting to recruit them, recruit them into your business now and have your team that you've developed bringing their guests to Amsterdam and watch your life and your income change forever. Thank you. Fantastic. I loved how Exan said she looks for a no. And I think that's what you'll find from really successful people is that they start to lean into the adversity. They, they, that's where the growth is. You heard that this morning. I just think that's really powerful. You look for those no's. But don't forget that when people say no, the business might not be for them, but I bet they've got a long contact list of other people. You could ask them for a referral. So there's lots of ways to um, obviously contact and invite people. So thank you for such great information. So once you contact and invite people, what are you inviting them to? Many of you invited guests to our amazing party we had on Friday night and to this experiencing an event like this. So what is it that you invite people to? And so our next question is presenting the opportunity. And I'd like to invite Axel and Manfred to just share briefly about presenting the opportunity. Also, I know that you asked if you could speak in German, but we are translating in 12 languages. However, if you would like to take just a minute and oh, address okay. you're I, I, to. I try to speak in English. There's a little bit of a problem because uh, when I was 16, I loved the girls in the disco, but not the English lesson, so I'm sorry for that. <laughs> okay. <laughs> yes. um, 
Okay, many, many people are asking me what is, what is more important, to, to speak about the products or about the, the business opportunity. And, you know, I, I think it's, I think Gines is a vehicle to, for the people, for me, for you, to, to reach your goals, your dreams, to have a better life. And I think it's not the best way to speak only about the business or only about the products. I think it's the most important step is to speak about the why, but not your why, the why from your prospects. This is important. If you find a way, and, and you know, the, we say, the, if you find the hot, hot button, then, then it's very easy to can say to, to other people, hey, if I can help you to, to have a better life, to have more time for your family, for holiday with your kids, is this interesting to hear more about it? I think that's the best way. And, and the second part is um, sell, um, sell yourself. Is it, is it right? When, when, I, when I go to people and say, okay, this is Jeunesse, and these are the products, and do you want to join with us? Maybe it works. But when I say, okay, do you want to have, do you want to have more time with your kids? And I work with the team together. And we are a team. I work with a team together with, um, with very good people, with a lot of experience. And we can help you to reach your goals. We can build an organization with thousands of people around the world. Is this interesting? We work together and show you how it works. This is the best way, in my opinion, to share the opportunity. Yes. advice okay um, I think many people asked me Manfred what are the special words to talk to people we reached the diamond in nine months it was very quickly but we work hard for it we have people they say yes and we have people they say no and we don't have the special words everyone from you has a contact to other people what's your reason or what's the words you will contact it. What the words you say, yes, I think that it's a final solution for me. It's, we don't have the special words. Uh, expect yourself, uh, say yourself, talk to the people, give him. Many people have a problem. They have some problems with money, with time, with family, with the car is uh, broken, everything. Give him a way to bring these problems away. Show them, hey, that's the way. You can do it if you like it. You look for people someone wants to go with you and someone not. That's the easiest way. Talk to a lot of people. Someone say yes and someone say no. Easy. No problem. Easy. easy. It's very easy. We have the best opportunity in the world. <laughs> Trust yourself. Trust network marketing, trust the company, trust the products. And when it's in your heart and in your mind and here, that's why I have the big one, then uh, <laughs> you can do it. You bring the people to this business. Have luck, have fun, and do it. Thank you so much. There's something to be said about trusting your gut. That's fantastic advice. So. Along with contacting and inviting people um, and sharing the opportunity, obviously, is the follow-up. You know, we always say the fortune is in the follow-up. And I had a friend who once said it was her responsibility to get people to make decisions because she just got them to do what they wanted to do all along, but they hadn't had the courage to do it. So you'll find in this business, a lot of people will be on the fence and just, you ask for a yes or no, but sometimes it's not that easy. People say, well, maybe, and you know, how many times do you follow up with people? So I'd love to turn it over to Chris. The, the follow-up. Bonjour, la belle équipe francophone. Uh, I think I'm gonna start with our story. I like to share stories. I think people learn with stories. And we were contacted by our sponsor. And number one, we were on her chicken list. So she was scared to call us. 
And she took the courage. And in this business, you need courage. You will need courage every step of the way. And she took the courage to give us a call. Said no. And uh, weren't interested, and it didn't look like a, a, a good company. <laughs> um, and then she sent us some information that we really we didn't look at. We didn't even look at the information because we weren't looking for an opportunity. And today I'm so grateful because she took courage once more. Three weeks after sending us the information, she could have said, you know what? They're not interested. They're not calling me back. She could have gotten into her head and, and listened to that little voice. And I often share this with my team. That little voice inside your head is not your friend. So don't listen to it. When it tells you they can't do something, you push it aside. She could have listened to her little voice and said, it's been three weeks. Not, they're not interested. I'm just going to push it aside. But today, today, I am so grateful that she followed up because it has transformed our lives. Because today we have a group of, of a personal group of over 30,000 people. Wow. Not only am I transforming my life, I'm transforming other people's lives because of a follow-up. Don't underestimate the power of a follow-up. It is your responsibility to bring people through a process. It is your responsibility to bring through a process and to finish the process. And if it's a no, it's okay. Like, they, like the leader said, don't take it personally. But I will tell you something. You want to take this business to the next, to a professional level? Get organized. Get organized to do proper follow-ups. I don't care if it's an agenda, if you want to write it. Some people still like to write things. If it's a smartphone, it doesn't matter. Get a system. Otherwise, you will not be able to properly follow up, and you'll lose people, and you will lose people. That's awesome. Hello, la France. Hello, la Belgique, la Suisse. Hello, everybody. Uh, I still write, by the way. I, I write. I still write. Follow up. Actually, Kasaya asked about how long you follow up with someone. Everybody, anybody ever wonder how long you follow up with someone? Until. Uh, <laughs> until they tell you yes or no. And I'm going to give you a, a story. I started two and a half years ago. There was someone that I had presented to in our prior network marketing company. It was like, gosh, probably 10 years ago now. And we, he never joined. We had a good one hour session together and we got to know each other a little bit. And he had huge credibility in the martial arts world. And I just respected him as a human being. And at the end of that one hour, even if someone is a no, was human to human, and we'll see what life can bring. Six months after starting Jeunesse, I contacted him, and uh, he was not available. And uh, he said, well, you can call me back in three months. And I said, you got it. So I put down the schedule, three months. Hey, John. <laughs> three months. How you doing? Uh, you know. You still want to follow up on what we're going to talk about. And then he sends me a text, well, Pierre, I mean, I have this, I got to go to Europe, I got to go to Canada, just a busy, busy guy. And so, we want to have the time now, can you call me back in three months? Get organized. Sure, sure. So write it down. <laughs> three months later, hey, John, <laughs> it's, it's been six months. And listen, it doesn't, don't get me wrong, I'm not spending an hour at a time. It's a really quick text, right? I mean, that's not going to take that long. And you have to understand, I like this guy. He's an integrous person. He's a caring person. He's made the difference in, the thou in thousands of children's lives. Through sports and through caring and through social service. So I have a lot of time for him. So following up is not a problem. But so nine months later, and then, ah, Pierre, sorry, here's what I have to do. And he writes down, I got to do this and this and this. So it's now another three months. 
I contact him again. At this point, Christine is saying, what are you doing? I said, what do you mean what I'm doing? He's not interested. I mean, come on, he's been to our time. By the way, it lasted two and a half years. Every three months. Wow. Hey, John. <laughs> How you doing? <laughs> How's it going? And he said, why? She said, why did you do this? She said, because you know what? I know what kind of guy he is. And if he wasn't interested, he'd give me the honor of telling me no and not wasting my time. And I asked him, John, if you're not interested, my friend, it's all good. He said, no, no, Pierre, if I tell, I tell you I'm not interested, then call me back in three months. <laughs> and two and a half years later, him and his new bride, Terry Lynn, are now on board as of two weeks ago, and they're gonna build Jeunesse in a big way, and they're super excited. Continue until they tell you yes or no. Don't be attached. Our business didn't depend on them coming on board or not, yeah. okay? It had no impact, because it wasn't them, it's gonna be someone else. So don't get attached emotionally to the decision. They're checking that out. If you're emotionally attached, they figure you're not confident enough in what you're doing. But share honestly, share that you care about them, it'll come back, and you never know what's gonna happen. Thank you very much, everybody. Wow. Excellent, excellent advice. I love what Christine said about treating this like a real business. You can't just on the fly think, oh, well, I'm gonna call this person or call that person. You've gotta get yourself really organized. And persistence in every area of your business. We talk about courage, persistence, all these amazing traits that we learn over time. The next thing our, of our eight simple steps is to enroll. So Cliff, I'd like to invite you to share, how do you close people? This is all about the transaction, right? What happens next? Thanks, Kasaya. Well, I'm gonna cover probably some of, the, some of the information that others have shared because it sort of all comes in the step of enrollment. And I don't look to close people, I look to open people up to possibilities. I think that's different from sales. So I'm gonna cover in the few minutes that we've got together five simple things that you can do to learn to enroll people and number one is to recognize what it is you're building because you see we're building communities you're building a community of people who will consume and share the products and so enrolling is key if you're going to build a community you need to enroll some people to join you in building that community and in building their community so one of the things i like to say to people is think about the qualities of the people that you would like to have as the people you personally enroll. What are some of those qualities? Maybe it's hard work. We've heard about the work ethic. Maybe it's persistence. Maybe it's entrepreneurial uh, vision. Maybe it's people skills. So think about the qualities that you want to attract and then become the role model because you want to develop those qualities so you start to attract people and you want to be constantly enrolling new people. The people who are successful are constantly enrolling new people into their team. So that's number one, recognize what you're building. Number two, there's only one reason why people join a network marketing business. Now we've all got lots of different reasons as to why we're building the business, but there's only one reason why people join. And that's why John didn't join when he was contacted, because it's all about timing. You see, if the timing's not right for someone, it doesn't matter how we make, it doesn't matter how great a company we've got, they're not gonna join. It's all about timing. That's why follow-up is such an important fact. And I have a very simple question that I ask people when I'm looking to enroll people, um, and that is, I ask them simply, is the timing right for you to take a look at something that might add some additional income? And now I might change that depending on who I'm speaking to, but is the timing right? Just ask them the question, is the timing right? And they'll tell you yes or no. John said no at the time. So that's number two. Number um, three is enrolling is different to recruiting. And I know lots of people use the word recruiting in network marketing, but I was once told that recruiting is getting someone to do something that they don't want to do, but getting them to do it anyway. So has anyone here ever sponsored someone who did nothing? I certainly have sponsored a few of those, and I think the reason is, why? Because maybe, just maybe, we got them to do something that they didn't really want to do, but we got them to do it anyway. That's recruiting. You see, enrolling is different.
People enroll in things from a place of choice. We enroll in tennis clubs, health clubs, fitness clubs, because we want to be part of it. And so to enroll people, you want to paint a clear vision of what it is you're building. Scott Lewis is an expert at painting the vision of where we're going as a company, and that makes people want to join and enroll. Yeah. So you need a vision of what it is you're building, so people will join your business. How's it going to impact them? And then I'm going to come back to what Christine said, and that is um, number four is enrolling is a process. It's not an event. It's not about bringing people to one uh, event like this. It's not about one phone call or one video. It's a process, and I have a four-step process. If we can bring the slide back up with the eight steps, please, that would be great. Um, I have a four-step process. My first step in enrolling people, I call it qualify. Step two is inform. Step three is verify, and step four is consolidate. But they're actually in those eight steps. So if we look at steps four through seven, that is essentially my four-step process. What I'm doing when I'm bringing people into step one, I call it qualify, but what I'm looking to do really is disqualify people. I'm looking to disqualify the people who aren't interested so I can spend time, my time and their time, with interested people. So it's a four-step process. And I'd like to finish off by uh, the job of what we do with these four steps, because I'm going to teach you how to be a bus driver. Okay, so I want everybody in this room to become a bus driver. So let me talk about the four steps. And let's imagine there are four bus stops. And your job is to drive the bus. Now, first of all, you've got to get some people on the bus. That's where your list comes from. That's where you start to invite people. So you get those people on your bus. Your job is to drive them to those four bus stops, step four, step five, step six, and step seven in our eight-step process. So you drive people to bus stop number one. What do you think is going to happen? Some people are going to get off the bus because it's their stop. Your job is not to persuade or convince people to get back on the bus. Your job is to take the people who are still on the bus to bus stop number two. What's going to happen at bus stop number two? Some people are going to get off the bus. Your job not to persuade or convince people to get back on the bus. Your job is to take people to bus stop number three, and then the people that stay on to bus stop number four. You see, what you have to do to be successful in enrollment is learn to facilitate the process. Learn to become a bus driver. You have two things to do. You've got to get people on the bus, so you've got to keep going back to the bus station to fill people up with, uh, get people on the bus, fill up the bus, and then you've got to drive around those bus stops. So learn to facilitate the process. So very quickly again, recognize that you build what it is you're building, a community. Two, recognize there's only one reason why people join, that's timing. Three, the difference between enrollment and recruitment. Four, recognize it's a process, and five, I love it. We got apples, we got buses. I really love the visuals. That's so helpful. So amazing advice. And guess what the eighth step is? Duplication. One of my favorite quotes from Maya Angelou, she says, when you learn, teach. And the only way you can learn something is by doing it. And so you guys here, you learn from people who have gone and done it before you. And then you implement it in your business. The only way you'll know how to handle rejection is if you get rejected. The only way you'll know how to make a list is if you start thinking about your contacts or opening up your cell phone. So we want to encourage you guys, you know, trust this process. When someone gives you something, it can easily be taken away. But when you earn something, you get to keep it forever. So just like everyone on this panel said, it is a process. You have to trust yourself. It's not so much about the end goal. You see these people, they're diamonds. They could be sitting at home. They're not. It's the person you become in the process. It's the evolution of self. It's the friends you have from all around the world that change your life from the inside out. So on behalf of our entire audience to my leadership, I want to thank you sincerely for giving of your gifts, your unique talents, sharing this amazing information with our audience. Ladies and gentlemen, please give them a warm round of applause for your Diamond Leadership Panel. Thank you very much.